I'd like to talk about self-love because I've just been teaching a four-day program about self-love and it's just such an amazing theme because often couples and people who, and individuals, people who want to be in a relationship, they focus on the partner they want to manifest, they focus on the other. And what we discover through this work is that whichever partner you choose, if you yourself um, are not available for love in your own being, then in that relationship it won't, um, it won't work out. So when you're available for love in yourself, then you'll find that in the relationship you're in, you will receive the kind of love that you um, are looking for. So for example, often women tell me that they want to be loved and cherished, they want to be caressed and kissed and adored like a goddess. And when it comes down to it, they don't feel like a goddess, they don't feel like they're really worthy of that. They have their own self-criticisms and judgments about their body, about how much time they can take up, about whether they're really lovable, they want to receive from a man, but in fact when the opportunity arises they find some way to distract or to move the attention back to their partner. So by looking at the theme of self-love, it's possible to open out each and everyone's capacity to receive. And then you can really find that in relationship that is more likely to happen. There's a part that perhaps wants to shine, wants to love, wants to celebrate, wants to be free, wants to express itself freely. And then there might be other parts that are more critical, more cautious. And we look at how to align the two, how to find harmony within each and every mm -hmm. one of them. So this weekend we were doing a beautiful sweat lodge ceremony, which is a ceremony that's based on Native American traditions. And we use it as a means to liberate our, our true vision, our true goal. So you go into this lodge which is made of natural substances outdoors and it's hot inside and it's dark. And in the sweat you release your own self-limitations and you open to your true prayers. It's a magical space. Each and every one of us came out refreshed and different. In terms of relationship, often couples will find that sexually and intimately and also in other realms, one person has one preference and the other has another. And how, how can that be worked with creatively? How can couples creatively find a way forward that honours both parties, that isn't just a vanilla kind of compromise? So we do a meditation called the yin-yang meditation, whereby each partner gets an opportunity to initiate the other into their own world, into their own reality, into what really helps them feel alive, sexually and emotionally and spiritually fulfilled. And it's like a journey so that both partners gain, there's consensuality, there's no coercion or anything like that, but it isn't compromise, it's about really entering into the world of the woman. What does her world look like, feel like? What is it to really meet her essential feminine qualities and how is it for the woman to really get a feel of what it is to be her man, how it is to enter into his world and to really meet his um, longings, his want for expression, his essentially masculine potent qualities and what we find is that that's a win-win situation for both. So very commonly in, cu in couples the man is holding himself back he wants to be a heartful new age man, or he wants to be considerate or kind. He doesn't want to hurt his partner. And as he does that, he also finds that he is holding back some of his own passion, his potency, his power. He doesn't want to express himself too fully or viscerally. So in one couple this weekend, and very frequently in, in workshops of this nature, the man found his passion and vitality and the woman was absolutely delighted. So um, it's an opportunity for each and every one of us to, to become more deeply aligned with who we really are and what really brings us fulfilment.